This is part nine of my upgrade for my water in my tab trailer. I'm going to move it out from the kitchen um, to the underside of the trailer. So we've done the frame up. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the design that I've done here um, and some of the important things if you're going to do this yourself, what's, what's important and what's not. Um, this water tank is going to be suspended by this frame underneath um, underneath the trailer between the frame rails and basically screwed onto the wood floor. Um, so the screws that you use are important. Um, number one, there has to be a lot of them. This is going to weigh about 50 pounds when it's full. Um, so I, if you can see them here, I, in, I drilled 22 holes along the perimeter of this because the trick to getting a screw to hold in wood is to disperse the weight along that wood as far as you can so instead of having like two bolts that have to hold or two screws that have to hold 25 pounds a piece if i put 22 of these guys in here each one has to hold about two pounds a piece which is great right these can easily hold two pounds the other thing that's that you'll notice about these screws these screws are intended these are um, sheet metal um, tin roof screws. So you rec some of you will recognize it's got a little steel um, washer on it and a rubber gasket underneath so that when this goes in that hole, it will seal behind it, right? That will keep water out because underneath the trailer's wet. It'll keep water from going into this hole and soaking into the wood because the screw doesn't hold in wet wood. It only holds in dry wood. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is butyl tape. It's that sticky stuff that come, you know, really goofy sticky stuff. I'm going to put a piece of it underneath the entire length of this, underneath here, so that when I screw that up onto the trailer, it'll seal the top. So between these, um, uh, rubber washers and that butyl tape that'll keep the wood that those screws are in um, very strong um, it won't get damp and they won't pull out because the wood rots it'll keep that completely sealed and nice and dry um, so other thing that's going on here let's take a close look at the at the front of it you some of you recognize this this is a water filter now I'm installing the water filter as the first thing out of the tank. So if I get any contaminant at all, it doesn't go into the system anywhere. It'll get stopped by this water filter. It's basically a screen. But if you look, consider that this tank is upside down, right? This is going to be the lowest spot. So the nice thing for me is to drain this tank. If I just take this cover off, it will do two things. It'll drain that tank and two, it will flush this screen off so that every time I drain my tank, it'll automatically clean that screen so that I won't have a situation where I find that the screen is plugged and I have to go check it and clean it and that kind of stuff. Is that every time I drain the tank, um, it will automatically be cleaned out. Um, that serves a nice dual purpose here. Is it because this will be the lowest spot in the tank, it will filter out any debris that gets in the tank and won't let it go anywhere into the hose system. It'll, it'll stop it right here and it'll act as a nice drain for me. This guy is just an adapter for my fill line. And I still don't know where I'm going to take that fill to. I don't know. I may take it up um, through the cabinetry and I may put it um, where it originally was. I may do that yet. I'm not quite certain how I want to do that. I'll do a little bit of more measuring and stuff and see. That might be the, the best thing to do is go ahead and extend this line um, to
to where it originally fell from. The other thing here is my, this is the vent line and the overflow. It does two things. One is when you fill this tank with water, um, it'll eventually fill the tank and then water starts coming out your overflow. That's just a way to know that your tank is full. Um, the other thing it does is when water comes out of the tank, this allows air in so that it, um, uh, doesn't collapse the tank, doesn't create a vacuum. You know, air as water comes out, air has to replace it. So that's what that does. So the end of this line, um, your vent line, needs to be in a protected area so that it doesn't suck when water is being pulled out to your system, that this vent line is not sucking mud or something in. So that the end of the other end of this vent line hose needs to be in a protected area, but it also needs to be outside the trailer so that when you overfill your tank, it's not like in your trailer and filling it. So what I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna go out and I'm going to um, test fit this. I'm gonna get a, a floor jack and put a board under here and jack it up so I don't have to hold it and arrange it pretty much where I want it to be. Um, you know, always measure twice, measure three times before you cut. And then I'll go ahead, bring it down, put the butyl tape on and, and screw it up in place. So that's what I'm gonna go do now. Um, it's freezing cold out there, so I'm gonna try to keep the video short while I'm outside. Anyway, see you in a bit. Okay, here we are underneath the trailer. Got some lights for you. Have a jack. And there is the tank. You can see that it clears the gas line on this side. Clears that just fine. I'm up this direction, about three inches from the axle. And uh, everything's clear. Isn't that nice? So what I'm gonna do is gonna drop this down. I'm gonna put the butyl tape along those two top strips and lift it back up in place. Should be great. Um, <laughs> a lot of work, but uh, it's gonna be nice. My, um, this is my fill. We'll take it forward and up. That's my vent. We'll take the vent that way. And the, the uh, pickup line will bring forward and connect to my uh, stainless steel input for the pumps, which is right here. Really nice. It's going to be a nice little straight little line. Um, so let me get at that and we'll get this all mounted up. See you in a bit. Okay, tank is down, stuck into the butyl tape. Got to give you a warning. You only get one chance at this. Once that tank touches that butyl tape, you're done. Kind of helps me out here in that it's cold and the butyl tape is not really, really, really nasty sticky. Um, but if you were doing this in a warm environment, um, you'd only get one chance to put that tank in. So I've got the tank in. We're now going to slip it up under there. I'm going to get it generally put in place and then peel the paper off and um, jack it up. So let's go at it. Okay, here we are. We are mounted. I have beetle tape here. I have beetle tape along there and there. You can see, get under here. There are all the screws running all the way back on both sides. This guy is absolutely nice and, and ready to go. Um, I gotta tell you, when you're working this, one of those uh, electric drills is nice <laughs> for putting that many screws in while you're sort of standing on your head. That works great. But everything here is clear. The next In the next video, number 10, um, we're going to start connecting these lines up. The fill line will connect right over here to my uh, uh, stainless steel pump pickup. My vent line, I'm gonna take that way and go on the frame and come up. And the uh, fill, I'm not certain where I'm gonna do with that yet. I may go up and into the cabinet. The cabinet's right here. I may just come out, go up into the cabinet and route it the same way where it was before. Um, I don't know that yet. Um, I'm still thinking about that. But this turned out great. Um, that is not going anywhere. Um, when I was screwing in those screws, I did notice that on two occasions, I ran into the aluminum cross member and went right into it. So that's nice. This guy is not just stuck on the wood, but he's actually screwed into the, uh, into the aluminum frame. Um, turned out really great guys so stay tuned for number 10 thanks for following along on number nine 
Stay safe, drive safe. See you later.